Well, a sigh of relief for millions of people in coastal areas surrounding the Pacific Ocean, including British Columbia, where a tsunami threat has ended. It was in place after a magnitude 8.8 earthquake off the coast of Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. Wait. The quake struck 136 kilometers from the city of Petropavlovsk in far eastern Russia. Local media is reporting that several people sought medical help after the earthquake, but no serious injuries have been reported. Russian scientists say this was the most powerful earthquake to hit the region since 1952. With me now is Jeffrey Park, seismologist and professor of mm -hmm. Earth and Planetary Sciences at Yale University. Jeffrey, welcome. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. So this 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake that struck off the coast of Russia, can you explain just how big of a quake it had to be to send alerts and advisories all the way to BC? Well, the, the uh, an earthquake of uh, magnitude 8 or above is going to trigger sort of a worldwide alarm about tsunami uh, potential. And so uh, it's not a surprise that, that a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake certainly would. It's one of the top 10 largest earthquakes that we've measured in the last century. What do we know about this earthquake? For example, how large of an area of the fault ruptured? Well, it's a big earthquake in a subduction zone where the Pacific Ocean is diving under the, Com the uh, Kamchatka Peninsula. And most of the rupture occurred offshore uh, uh, but it's still a very large area. The area in the uh, uh, reconstructions of the fault slip is about the size of the U.S. state of Connecticut. So it's a, it's a pretty large area that's been ruptured. The hypocenter was very close to the city of Petropavlovsk and caused a lot of shaking there. But the very largest of the rupture length, almost 10 meters of, of, of actual motion on the fault, occurred maybe 100 kilometers farther to the south in a largely unpopulated area uh, uh, offshore. Is it known how far the rocks on the fault slid? That's about the largest size, about uh, a 10 meters was the, was, is the uh, reconstruction from the fault models that, uh, that were devised from the uh, uh, first uh, 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 telemetered earthquake from the, from the earthquake. Now, we know that the tsunami advisory has ended for the West Coast, but how catastrophic could this have been if, in, if it indeed uh, did hit the West Coast? Well, the, the tsunami itself did hit the, the, the West Coast. It just had a fairly low amplitude. And there were some areas along the U.S. West Coast where focusing effects caused the the tsunami height to be somewhat larger, as large as maybe five feet in some reports uh, near the near uh, Crescent Bay area of California, where where this often happens historically. Uh, so the tsunami was there, but it was not large enough to cause uh, significant damage. Although it's always safer for people to stay away from the seashore. In Hawaii, for instance, uh, the damage could have been. Very, I mean, there could have been large loss of life if people had stayed close to the seashore. Evacuations were were were, were called for, and and similarly uh, in the Japanese island of Hokkaido. Uh, that, so, um, a large earthquake in it, it's too far away, uh, Kamchatka, for a, a really large earthquake, even th an earthquake this large, to cause substantial damage along the U.S. West Coast. But on the other hand, uh, the U.S. West Coast and also Alaska are, are susceptible to earthquakes of this size or even larger. So we have to be concerned about uh, 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 giant earthquakes that occur more locally. Any connection between this earthquake and the volcano eruption in Russia? Well, there's volcanoes occurring in Kamchatka all the time. There's a large number of volcanoes and they're, they're connected uh, to, the, to, to the subduction earthquakes. Uh, sometimes like loosely, sometimes sharply, there was in the 1990s uh, a, a particular volcano named Karimsky that switched on after a large earthquake off offshore, about a magnitude 7, 7.5, and then kept uh, erupting almost every 10 minutes for a decade uh, until another large earthquake shut it off. So the strain that's involved in these large fault zones is, is uh, uh, large enough that it can affect some of the volcanic plumbing systems. Wow. Uh, in, 
in Kamchatka near Petropavlovsk, there are two large uh, volcanoes that you can see from the city. They're right there. And uh, they have had historical eruptions. So it would be a concern that uh, this earthquake may have, uh, like, triggered it may trigger in the future some uh, volcanic activity at those two volcanoes. Oh, goodness, that is a concern. Uh, Jeffrey, we will have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Jeffrey Park is a seismologist and professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Yale University.